In Creole Parametric, the Behavioral Modeling Extension, or BMX, is my favorite, and in my opinion, one of the most powerful modules that you have. Let's take a look at an old PTC demo that shows you the power of this functionality. Here I have a crankshaft part open. It's just got a few features in the model tree, and I've taken a bunch of the different dimensions from the lobe and shown them in a 3D annotation. So here we have the width of the lobe over there. It's a value of four. Here we have the basically the length of the counterweight. It's a value of three. Then we have the upper part of the lobe. It's got a radius of 0.85. And the distance from the rotation point to the crank pin is 1.75. So that's all well and good. Let me repaint the screen so we don't see those different dimensions on here. Now, when you design a crankshaft, you want to make sure that the center of mass, the center of gravity, is in line with where it is rotating. Otherwise, you're going to end up with eccentricity. You're not going to end up with smooth motion. So, let's take a look at our mass properties. To do that, I will go to the Analysis tab, and here we have Mass Properties. And we can click on the preview button over there, and you can see where the center of mass is. The first part of the BMX behavioral modeling extension is creating what are called datum analysis features. And those are features that perform calculations on your model. Here I did the mass properties. Instead of doing this as a quick analysis, I can create this as a feature in my model. If I go to the Feature tab, I can generate different parameters for this calculation. So for example, we have volume, surface area, and mass. And there are a whole bunch of other ones I can check on here, like for the moments of inertia and other different rotation angles, inertia stuff. So you can create parameters if you want, but you can also create other datum features. Here I can create a coordinate system located at the center of gravity. There's also the option to create a point at the center of gravity. Let's click the OK button. And if we take a look in the model tree, there we have the feature. If I ever change any of the different dimensions or features in here, then whenever I regenerate my model, it's going to recalculate the mass properties and update them. So let's take a look at the coordinate system located at the center of gravity. We can see here that it is offset from the axis of rotation. That means that we are not going to get smooth motion. Let's measure that distance. I will go to the measure drop-down list and go right to distance. That's what I want. And let's measure the distance from the center of gravity. And then I'll hold down the control key to select the axis of rotation. And here we have the distance. Just like before, I'm going to make this as a feature. Here we have the drop-down list. We can make this as a feature. We can change the name if we want. The important thing is I'm going to go to the Feature tab, and I want to create a parameter for that distance. Again, first half of BMX essentially is creating datum analysis features based on calculations, and these can generate parameters and other datum features. Let's click the close button over here. And so there I have the measure distance feature in here. The second major portion of BMX is the ability to create what are called feasibility and optimization studies. In this particular example, I'm just going to do a feasibility study. With a feasibility study, you're going to define some different constraints that you want your model to achieve, and then you'll specify different dimensions or parameters that Creo Parametric is allowed to change and the range that you're allowed to change them. And then Creo Parametric will change those different dimensions and parameters in order to achieve your design constraint. If you are doing an optimization study, you also have the choice to minimize or maximize some other quantity. Typically, a lot of times you are trying to minimize the mass, but in this particular case, I am not going to minimize or maximize anything. I'm just going to do a feasibility study, and you'll notice the goal area here is grayed out. 
So now let's specify the design constraint that we want to use. I will click on the add button and let's bring this dialog box up more towards the middle so you can see it. If I go to the drop down list, we can see all the different parameters that were generated by those data analysis features. Here's the volume, the surface area, and the mass from the mass properties data analysis feature, but I'm interested in the distance. In order to eliminate eccentricity, I want this distance to be set to a value of zero. I want the center of mass in line with the axis of rotation. Let's click the OK button out of here, and we can add other additional design constraints if we want, but for this particular example, that's all I am interested in. So now let's pick different dimensions that we are going to allow to vary. I will click the Add Dimension button over here, and then we can pick a feature in the model, and we can see the different dimensions. And so I decide that I want this dimension to change, this dimension to change, and this dimension to change. I'm changing three of the different dimensions in here. And so I list the names of the dimensions in here. Let me make this dialog box wider just so that we can see everything in here. So there are the different dimensions. I change the dimension names. And it takes the initial value of the dimension and the default ranges are plus and minus 10% of the value. So let me think about this a little bit. Right now, my center of gravity is too low. I want it to move up. So I want this number to be lower. Maybe I'm going to change the maximum value to the current value. I always like to do some little math in here to sort of make it more equitable in terms of what I'm trying to achieve. And maybe I want this dimension to be able to go lower. Maybe I want it to go to a value of 2.5. All right, the next one in here is the crank pin height. So in order to move the center of gravity up, I want this value to increase. So I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Let's start at the current minimum value. and Maybe I'm going to allow a maximum value here of 2.25. And then we have the radius of the lobe over here. I don't want it getting any smaller. So once again, I'm going to change the minimum value to the current dimension value. And for the maximum value, oh, let's open this up. Maybe I say that this can go up to a value of 1.25. The add dimension collector is still active. Let me hit the middle mouse button to deactivate this. So now I have everything set up in here. Let's take a moment to look at the values right now. Again, the length of the counterweight is a value of three. This is 1.75 and this is 0.85. Let's hit the compute button. And now it ran, and so this number was 3, it went to 2.63. This value went to a value of 2, it was 1.75. And this dimension over here was 0.85, now it is 1.12. So that way we let Creo Parametric come up with values to make sure that the center of gravity is in line with the axis of rotation. Now here's where BMX gets really powerful. We can create this as a feature in the model. If I click on this button over here, it creates an optimization feature. We can change the name of it. I'm gonna call this zero eccentricity so that I know when I look at it what exactly it does. And I'm happy with this. I will click the close button over here. And let me go to the annotate tab. Let me select this over here and just make it a little wider just because it was going over to another line. So there we see the current values in here. And again, where you get to the real power of BMX is that you have these as features in your model so that if your geometry ever changes, it will reperform these calculations and then reperform the feasibility or optimization study to ensure that your design intent is always met. So again, let's take a look at another change. Here we have 2.63, 1.12, and 2.00. Let's say that I decide to make this width a little smaller. Since this is a 3D note, I can double click on the dimension normally. Oh, let me get, there we go. 
Uh, let's now change the value over here. And I'm going to make a small change. Let's make this 3.75 and hit the check mark. The model needs a regeneration, so I'll click regenerate. And so now we can see that the dimensions have changed once more. Now the length here is 2.65, this dimension is 1.10, and this is 1.98. So again, where you get into the real power of BMX is that we are building our design intent right into our models. We are making sure that we're always meeting our design constraints and our design goals. That is why BMX is so incredibly powerful. I recommend that you check it out. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.